Hi everyone, my name is Ariana Gewertz and I'm a junior at Barnard College studying computer science. While I'm originally from Boston, my parents are from Quebec and Nova Scotia, so I'm all the more excited and honored to be speaking with our next presenter, the Right Honorable Stephen Harper. Often hailed as one of Israel's best friends, he served as the 22nd Prime Minister of Canada from 2006 to 2015. Prime Minister Harper, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. What was your initial exposure to the state of Israel and how did you become connected to it personally? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, I tell people it really, uh, my, my affection for Israel really kind of grew out of my upbringing. Um, my father, who I mentioned, I mentioned uh, Joe Harper, uh, his background, my father um, uh, grew up um, in a household. The Harper family for many generations has always been very pro-Jewish. I don't know what the original reason for that is, but it's kind of always been the inclination. Uh, I grew up, um, say, with my dad, who was a, a very strong and a very vocal opponent of anti-Semitism at a time when anti-Semitism was, was quite prevalent in Toronto and in Canada. Um, so I kind of grew up with that perspective, um, you know, a, a perspective that the Jewish people had, ha, have and continue to make a tremendous contribution to humanity in every field of endeavor, way beyond the, their numbers. And, um, and, you know, we obviously had some Jewish friends growing up and I had that perspective. And so when, you know, when I was a young boy, uh, Israel was still in its early stages. It was fighting wars, it seemed, every other year just to survive the hostility of its neighbors. And, um, you know, um, at, at the time, frankly, Western sympathy for Israel was widespread, so that wasn't unusual. Um, but as I, say, I grew up very much with with that perspective and, and a great admiration for what the uh, Jewish people had accomplished, particularly coming out of World War II and the Holocaust. And you often say that when you're asked why you support Israel, you say that that's the wrong question. With an honorary PhD from Tel Aviv University and an honorary degree from Jerusalem College of Technology, can you tell us more about why you phrase it like that? Yeah. Um, well, what I tell people is that, you know, it's, it's interesting when, you know, and uh, even by the Jewish community in Canada, which has been a great supporter of mine, uh, will often be asked a question like you just did. Why do you support Israel? Um, and I say, it, it, I don't really say it's the wrong question. It's the way I say what a change and what a sad change. You know, if you were asking a, a politician like myself um, back when I was growing up, you would never have asked a politician in Canada why he or she supports Israel. You would have been really surprised if they didn't. And you would have asked, why do you not support Israel? This fledgling democracy, a Western ally under siege from, you know, from um, hostile states, hostile not just to Israel, but in many cases to us. Um, states that obviously don't have anywhere near the same standards of governance, freedom, democracy, human rights, rule of law of Israel. Why would you have not been on Israel's side? Um, you know, that's, that's why I say uh, it's the wrong question. Um, you know, but today, I mean, let's be frank, I'm, I'm delighted uh, that we're doing this and this is being done in a university setting because the truth of the matter is that for the past generation or so, universities have been a center of propagating um, vile anti-Israeli uh, propaganda. And um, unfortunately now, um, in not just academia, but media particularly, and, and other some other institutions, uh, Israel has been so consistently bashed that now one feels it necessary to ask the question why you would actually support Israel. I, I, uh, I think the case for not supporting Israel is almost non-existent. So that's why I say it's the wrong question. Yeah. And um, I've also heard you speak about the economy and the trading in Israel. Um, can you speak a little bit about that and why you think it's important for, for those reasons as well, how that benefits the rest of the world? Well, you look, Israel, Israel is a remarkable economic success story. I, in fact, I just returned from uh, an extended business trip to Israel and to the Gulf. Um, first time ever, I should mention, first time ever, I go to the, both Israel and the Gulf regularly on business. The first time ever I was able to go 
uh, to both on the same trip using the same passport. What a positive uh, change that is. But I mean, Israel is just remarkable. This was a country, I, you know, I think a lot of younger people do not understand how poor Israel was uh, in the 1940s when it was founded. Um, much of it was barren. The populations who, who um, immigrated to it were for the most part not, you know, wealthy or successful professional people. Um, so what you have today uh, through many generations of change is one of the most prosperous, successful, competitive um, countries in the world. I'm involved in Israel um, in the technology sector and uh, in particular the area of, of security technology. I mean, Israel is, is just a world leader. It, it's the, the number of um, unicorns, startups, unicorns that it produces for the for uh, an economy of its size is just phenomenal. It's just almost unbelievable. Um, I say just prosperous through and through. Um, as Prime Minister, Canada, Israel was one of the few countries that Canada actually had a trade agreement when I came to office. We had very few trade agreements when I came to office. We had trade agreements with only five countries in the world. When I left, we had trade agreements with 51. But Israel was one we did have, but we modernized that trade agreement to try and take better advantage of the economic opportunity that Israel is. One of the one of the strange things about the Israel-Canada relationship is that in spite of these being both two, two very prosperous Western democracies, and obviously with tremendous people-to-people -people links, the actual trade and business between Canada and Israel has not been large, was not large over time. And, and the reason for that is, is actually quite easy to explain. It's because the Jewish community in Canada, which had such strong links to Israel, always viewed Israel more as a charity than as an economic opportunity. Because of course, for many decades, um, you know, Israel relied on the financial support of, of Jewish community and others around the world to sustain itself. It's a very, you know, very modest a country of very modest wealth in its early decades. But obviously that should change and um, we're pleased to see there has been growth in the trade and investment relationship since we modernized that trade agreement. Great. So now shifting gears a little bit to discussing where we are today and the Israel Summit in particular. The goal of the Israel Summit is to engage students of all backgrounds with the state of Israel, many of them for the first time, regardless of religious affiliation, political affiliation or academic interests. Why is this event important to you? Why did you want to be a part of it? And what do you think the Israel Summit can help achieve on college campuses today? Well, look, one of the, uh, one of the roles I actually have, I, you know, I'm, I spend most of my time now running a, uh, a global consulting and investment business. But one of the political roles I do have is I'm chairman of an organization called the Friends of Israel Initiative which is roughly 30 former high office holders around the world, all of us who are not Jewish, uh, you know, who make it our, our business to um, intervene quietly around the world to be supportive of Israel at the international level. And I'm, I'm pleased to see, you know, in spite of the anti-Israeli rhetoric we see in the West and on many Western campuses, the reality is that the world as a whole has been moving much much more closer, much more close, closer to Israel. Um, maybe not at the multilateral level, but at the bilateral level, not just the Arab peace, but Israel has established new relationships in Asia and in Africa, in particular, Latin America, many relationships that it never had before. Israel today, you know, has more and better relationships around the world, outside of Western Europe in particular, than it ever had before. And, you know, obviously, so th this remains a cause that is important to me. And, you know, I would hate to see, you know, advanced Western democracies like ourselves be turning away from Israel at precisely the time when the rest of the world, the world that supposedly is against Israel is actually uh, turning out to be increasingly good friends and trade partners with Israel. So. I think it really is important to spread that message. I would hope also that this would cause some of the students and others who are viewing this and participating in this to actually go to Israel. I mean, go to Israel and see what a prosperous and progressive country it is. Um, you know, it, frankly, um, it wouldn't hurt to see 
some other parts of the region to understand how different Israel truly is on every measure of freedom, democracy, human rights, the rule of law, uh, economic well-being. Um, it is a truly extraordinary story. So, you know, I encourage people to really experience Israel, see that. And, um, you know, we all, we, all should, we all should value our democracy, but I think you need to understand how precious Israeli democracy I, is. I tell people there is no democracy like Israel. Um, you mentioned my speech at the Knesset. Um, when I um, spoke at the Knesset, I opened up the, one of the newspapers the day I was to speak and there was actually a, an, adver, an advertisement in one of the newspapers from a far-right group denouncing me as not sufficiently supportive of Israel. And then when I spoke to the Israeli Knesset, a bunch of far-left members heckled me and had to be removed from the chamber. So as I say, only in Israel could you give a speech that's entirely pro-Israel and still find people opposing you on both sides and that <laughs> kind of tells you a lot about a lot about how vigorous Israel, Israel, Israeli democracy really is. I don't think you'd have that range of opinion in any other parliament in the world. Yeah, definitely a lot of um, differences in opinion, a lot of people unafraid to share those opinions in Israel. It's a lively and exciting place to be. So going off of that, for our last question, if you could send a message directly to the students who are watching you now, what would that message be? Yeah, let me send to uh, Ariana and, and um, you know, one is going to be a harsh message and the other, I think, a hopeful message. I think, first of all, the harsh message, um, this needs to be said, um, the BDS movement. Um, boycott, divest, sanction, which is, you know, so strong on many campuses today. Um, I have heard this rhetoric before in my life, um, and we should be under no illusion of what the BDS movement is. And it needs to be called for what it is. The BDS movement takes the traditional language of anti-Semitism and tries to, and using opposition of the state of Israel, tries to put it into sophisticated and intellectual language, political language, for acceptance in polite society. There is no basis for that kind of a view of Israel <coughs> based on the facts. Israel is not a perfect country <coughs> by any means. Um, you know, every country has its flaws and its challenges. But the only thing that would cause you to distinguish Israel from every other country in the world and single it out for sanction and for divestment and for boycott is frankly an opposition to the fundamental idea that the Jews can have their own state. That is the only reason. On any measure, on any measure of treatment of people, of human rights, of rule of law, of standards of justice, Israel is one of the strongest and most admirable countries in the world, as I say, be under no illusion. And those who oppose the existence of the state of Israel do so not for its policies, they do so fundamentally. There is nothing Israel could change that would cause them to support Israel. They oppose Israel's existence because they oppose the existence of the Jewish state. And in many cases, I'm gonna add, they oppose it for the very reasons I support it. They oppose Israel because Israel is in fact a friend and ally of the West. And if you actually talk to many of these people long enough, you will find out they are not merely anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. They are also anti-Western and anti-American in many, many cases. So as I say, that movement needs to be confronted for what it is. It is simply a movement of hostility and anti-Semitism to the Jewish people in modern form, and it should be denounced as such. Um, that's, the, that's, the, um, that's the harsh message. Look, the hopeful message is this. Uh, I think Israel is just a tremendous story for humanity. There really has been nothing like it. Here you have a group of people you know, who were the remnant of a population, for the most part, the remnants of populations that were almost destroyed in the most systematic genocidal act in history. 
They went to a part of the world that was extremely poor. Obviously, there were some Jews already there. They went back to their community there. And they built one of the most progressive, prosperous, forward-looking countries. And they did so in a part of the world that remains dangerous and generally poor today. So it is just, it is just an incredible story. You know, people who, the only time in history, you go there, you hear the Hebrew language, the only time in history, a dead language has actually been revived and become the common language of a national population. So this is a tremendous story of what humanity can accomplish when it really wants to. And I say, I encourage everyone to understand that and to go there and see it for themselves. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Prime Minister. It's been truly an honor. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, well, thank you for having me and all the best with the rest of the summit. <laughs>